Hey everyone, Austin here again with another Let's Play video. Today, as you can see, it's going to be Mylon Secret Castle for the Nintendo Game Boy. Uh, basically following up with my Nintendo Entertainment System version Let's Play that I just posted recently. Uh, we're also going to be doing something a little bit different here. We're going to be drawing direct comparisons as we go through this game. And I'm going to be layering uh, the NES footage on top of this occasionally so you guys can see direct side-by-side -side comparisons and whatnot. I am, you know, I decided to fire this game up today and I got the idea to do that because this game is insanely faithful to the NES game. I was really shocked at how faithful this game was. Um, instead of trying to just go and do its own thing like a lot of NES to Game Boy ports did back in the day, it tries to be just like the NES game, and in some ways it improves uh, on the NES game. Uh, bosses aren't nearly as difficult and not nearly as threatening, so um, <laughs> the game is a little bit easier. Um, yeah, enemies die faster, or I should say bosses die faster. Um, Mylon isn't quite as stiff in this version. He can make longer jumps uh, without having to build up speed and things like that. You have uh, extra music that's not in the NES game, so the main theme doesn't, you know, you know, grate on you after a little while because the music is actually varied in this this, this version. Um, there are a couple of other changes as well. Some windows are easier to jump to. Um, you know, there's not a lot of uh, trial and error that has to be done. And uh, some of the most frustrating parts of the game uh, really aren't as bad as they are in the NES game. And so, you know, this version of the game is actually much more welcoming to new players than the NES game is. I still prefer the NES game. I think that's the best way to play Mylon um, because it does provide a legitimate challenge and uh, you just get this 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 feeling of satisfaction when you finally tackle that game and, and defeat it. Um, whereas you might get less of that with this version, especially with how sluggish it can move in comparison to, to, the, to the NES game. But it's still a fantastic conversion and, uh, like I said, very, very welcoming to, to newer players, uh, first-time players of Mylon. So, but yeah, we're going to go through the whole game. It should take us an hour to an hour and a half. And uh, like I said, I'll overlay some NES footage as I point out, uh, you know, interesting differences and whatnot. So before we jump into it, as usual, I'd like to give a big shout out to my current Patreon backers, and so they're going to flash by the screen. Thank you guys for your continued support. Likewise, with the uh, recent live stream super chatters and channel members, thank you guys as well. Uh, just a heads up, guys, I do live streams here every Thursday night, so if you're around, feel free to stop in and say hello. So yeah, uh, the first big difference here, obviously, is the introduction, which is really cool. There's also... Uh, an extended ending, which is also quite nice. You don't get in the NES one. Uh, also, there's a password save system in this game. There are no passwords in the NES game. That's one of the frustrating things about it, is uh, you pretty much have to do the whole game in one sitting on the NES. Now, there is a secret continue code in that version, but a lot of people don't even know about it, and so, you know, they get wrecked in the game. Uh, but for those of you guys familiar with the NES game, you can see already that, you know, it is it is quite faithful here. Um, you know, you've got the well on the side, you've got three doors up front, you got one window, uh, a couple of blocks here, which one uh, we'll actually bust through later on. And uh, holding up here will allow us to go into our first area. And this is the area I recommend starting off on. It's probably the easiest area in the game. Uh, Mylon's got a bubble attack. For those of you guys that haven't seen this game before in any incarnation, uh, he has a bubble attack. When he just taps the button regularly, uh, he shoots it up, and if he holds down, he will shoot it down, kind of like so. Um, busting uh, blocks open will also give you money. Uh, money is used to purchase things. Uh, you can also find yourself some hidden Hudson Bees. The Hudson Bees act as shields, and uh, the shields are actually very important for survival in this game. Now, when you first start playing, you'll notice that Mylon can't shoot his bubble very rapidly. I'm mashing the button right now, and this is as fast as he can shoot. It's the same in the NES game. Um, but killing, uh, you know, enemies will reveal power-ups, like umbrellas, which we just got. And then Mylon can, uh, shoot bubbles a little more rapidly. Just like so, you can see I'm shooting bubbles more rapidly. Now, what's actually kind of interesting in this version is if you get another umbrella, Mylon will, uh, have auto-fire enabled. That is a big difference from the NES game. The NES game, you always have to mash, um, but in this game, 
uh, auto fire is an option at certain points. Now, just like the NES game, when you leave areas, your your umbrella will basically go away, and you'll have to get another one at the next uh, stage you you walk into. Um, but I found that to be extremely interesting, is just holding down the fire button after a certain period of time. It makes uh, the game a lot easier to play. So let's see if I can try to get myself maybe another umbrella here. You'll also notice that there aren't as many enemies in the game. Um, so the NES version of Mylon Secret Castle can be very, very chaotic. And this game is anything but, really. I mean, it can still, it's got its challenging moments, but it is much more manageable than uh, the NES game. And so you're going to find yourself not having to grind out for health as much and whatnot. But yeah, so one of the first differences I wanted to talk about is, you know, the size of the arenas is is uh, slimmed down a bit in the Game Boy version. So if you look at these blocks on the left-hand side there, you notice that there, there will be three um, blocks that you can shoot right here, and one on the bottom revealing a honeycomb. Um, on the NES version, that little tower of blocks goes up higher. And it's the same with the uh, the top here. So we're gonna go up to the top just to show you here, where the uh, the ceiling doesn't go up as high in this version of the game. So normally in the NES one, these blocks are in a similar location, but you can actually go above them as well. There's just uh, you know the screen scrolls up higher, um, and, you know there's there's more room to move around. Uh, by the way, the exit door is still in the same area. And, uh, there we go. So Mylon can actually shoot even more rapidly now. And it might be the next umbrella where auto fire basically turns on. Um, one interesting thing too is that these doors, you have to shoot down. Um, at the, the base of the door, otherwise the door won't actually appear. It's actually kind of interesting. Alright, so let's go ahead and buy our first item here. You need to push this block over, uh, shoot the door. Notice the door is not appearing. I have to shoot down, which is kind of an interesting change. In the NES one, you don't have to shoot down. Um, do you notice that the, the hint system here is pretty much the same? So we hit that, and he says secret entrance and front wall. We hit this one, and he says bump head to find box. All of the hints are pretty much identical to the NES game. It's actually quite interesting. And uh, we get the spring shoes there, just like we do in the NES game. And uh, also, our music box is going to be in the exact same spot. Now, um, the music boxes are all in the same locations as they are in the NES game, um, but you'll notice that the music boxes play a lot faster now. Uh, and combined with Mylon's uh, faster movement, uh, basically he picks up speed quicker than he does in the NES game. Um, it's, uh, it's, these are actually quite difficult to, uh, to uh, play well at, and uh, playing well at these is pretty important, although I will admit it's not as important playing well in the Game Boy version, um, because money is not as big of a problem as it is in the NES game. In the NES game, you can find yourself uh, getting pretty tight on funds, um, but in this version, uh, some things are actually cheaper, and um, and uh, so it's not as necessary to to get a ton of money as as quickly uh, as you might want to in the NES game. But uh, basically, what you do there in the the music box game is you collect notes, and uh, those notes will add up to cash, uh, and then you can use that cash to buy uh, various items and whatnot or health. Uh, we will be using that on health later on in the game. And there we go. I got a third umbrella, and uh, I am now just holding on the button. So we have auto fire now. It's really interesting. That's actually a very welcome addition, is uh, is that auto-fire. So now that we've done everything here, we got our key, which uh, lets us go through that door. We can go to our, our, our second place right here, and this is going to give us a potion uh, that's going to turn us small when we touch a glove. So it says, shrink when you touch the glove. So we're going to go ahead and exit here. And just like in the NES game, the castle will actually... Uh, well, it'll turn uh, stormy outside, and then lightning bolts will start chasing you, just like in the NES game. Now, the effect isn't quite as apparent in this one, because, it, you know, we are in the Game Boy, black and white and whatnot. Um, but it's still, it's faithful to the NES game. Um, although, the uh, the little lightning bolts, they do actually take a lot longer to kill than they do in the NES game, which can be a little aggravating. 
Uh, but fortunately, you won't find yourself stuck outside very often in this game compared to the NES one. Uh, there aren't really any tricky jumps or anything like that that you have to make outside the castle. Um, there's also going to be a hidden door here, but I want to come back over here and grab this, uh, this money. And, uh, let's go ahead and push this over. And then again, we have to shoot down to open up the door. And just like an NES game, uh, all this guy offers you is power for five bucks. And power gives you a little bit of health back. Like, the five dollar power only gives you a couple blocks of health back. Uh, so it's not worth buying unless you're absolutely desperate. But you're really best off just grinding out, um... Yeah, just grinding out enemies for health. You notice that enemies do drop, uh, hit points. And there's another Hudson B. Now, something I haven't verified yet is if Hudson B's stack in this game. Uh, they stack on the NES version. Um, the Hudson B's give you your shield. Uh, and so normally your shield can only take a couple of hits, and then it disappears. But in the NES one, you can get multiple B's, and uh, it will stack. Also, this room in here is still the same. You can buy the, uh, the Lantern for 40, and the NES one, it's 50. Uh, but we're not going to do that. So we're going to go ahead and uh, actually go ahead and turn small once more. So I actually have to push this over and fall down. And then we have to touch this glove. And now we're small, Mylon. And we're going to come over here, get the key. You notice this area is actually a little bit smaller, too. So this series of blocks is, uh, you know, the, the money from these blocks are in, um, the money symbols are in slightly different locations, which is interesting. So, yeah, you can tell how this block area is a little bit smaller than the NES block area. It's kind of interesting. I really like how, you know, they, they made things faithful, but, you know, because of maybe memory limitations or something like that, or, you know... It's just how they felt like doing it. Uh, everything is a little bit smaller in this version. It's kind of cute, actually. So this is our second music box. And uh, so we're going to go ahead and try to play this out as best as we can. And try not to get flat symbols. Uh, the sharp symbols give you two notes. The, uh, the, uh, the uh, regular notes here give you uh, one note. The flat symbols uh, take away a note. So you do not want to touch the flat symbols, but sometimes you just can't avoid touching the flat symbols because so many notes come out so quickly in this version that um, it's easy to grab notes that uh, you might not want or or symbols you don't want, like the flat symbols. And uh, just like in the NES game, as you ooh, we got fifty, so we're at thirty-one. Yep, just like the NES game, it gives you $25 for getting 50 or more. So that was fantastic. That was actually the first time I've gotten uh, 50 on uh, one of the Music Box games. So that put us ahead quite a bit cash-wise. So, um, you know, if you are desperate for health, you can, you, you know, if you get ahead cash-wise, you can go ahead and burn some of it um, on uh, some power or something like that if you really need to get health back. All right, so with that out of the way, we're going to go to our first boss fight. We go through this window. And, uh, here we go. So you'll notice that the bosses are fairly similar. But, uh, when you hit the bosses in this game, they actually, uh, they actually flinch a little bit. Which is kind of interesting. They don't really do that on the NES game. Um... And, uh, you'll also notice that they don't fire nearly as quickly in this version. So the bosses are actually significantly easier in this game. Now, there is also a later boss that actually, uh, was given a completely different design than what he had in the NES version, which is also very interesting. And I'll definitely make sure to, uh, show you the NES footage when we, when we do that. So there's an interesting uh, difference here as well. In the NES game, you can actually sit right in the middle of these li little blocks, and they'll both fall at the exact same time. Uh, they don't do that in this version of the game. And I'll actually demonstrate that once I get to the, uh, the top set, or that, that long, uh, corridor of those, uh, disappearing blocks. So, just working our way up here, like so. And we've got some, we have some, you know, disappearing blocks right there as well. Or blocks that Mylon can bust open. 
You know, again, this version of the game is very faithful, but one thing you'll notice if you listen... There's new music. Um... <laughs> <laughs> so one of the one of the complaints a lot of people have with Mylon Secret Castle on the NES is the music uh, starts to grate on their nerves after a while, and um, this game is actually interesting in that it it actually adds some music, which is pretty cool. And here's our third music box game, continuing to rake in that cash. But you'll notice that there are uh, you know a couple of extra instruments in play now. So basically what happens is you start these music box games, the first one only has a tiny, tiny bit of percussion, the second one has a little more percussion, now this one actually has an extra, an actual instrument playing, um, adding, uh, adding another layer to the track. And, uh, for every music box that we get, um, you know, even more layers are added to the music, which is, you know, I, I really gloated about it in my NES playthrough, um, but it's a really neat feature. It's, I really like attention to detail like that. It's, uh, it adds a lot of charm to the game. Alright, so we've got 70 bucks, and whenever you exit out of the, um, the music box games, uh, you get thrown back to the beginning of the level. Now, in the NES version of the game, uh, when you exit a music box, it will, it will take you to the beginning of the stage, but... If you came through a door, say you went to a shop in the same level, then went to the music box, it'll actually checkpoint you at the shop door that you last went in. This version does not do that. Uh, so I did test that earlier tonight, and uh, unfortunately it does not do that, so... Yeah, so every time you get to a music box, it uh, sends you all the way back to the beginning. So, in the NES version here, like I said, you can just sit in the middle of these two, uh, disappearing, falling platforms. And, uh, so you can actually, uh, go down that shaft a lot faster. Uh, interestingly, on this, uh, these falling blocks here, Mylon can actually stand on them for a moment. He can't do that in the NES version, he'll just fall straight through them. Uh, which is interesting as well. We need to hit this spring right there, and then just keep jumping our way up like so. And this is a shop right here. So this is our lantern. This is the lantern you want to buy. It's 14 instead of 40. Uh, in the NES version, I think it's like 20 or 25 or something like that. Because everything is a little more expensive in that game. Not everything, some things. Uh, some core items are more expensive in the NES game. And there's another Hudson B right there. And also, this part was made a little bit easier as well, due to the, uh, the lower screen size. Notice that the honeycomb is flush with the, uh, the platform next to it. On the NES version, the honeycomb is much more tricky to get. Um, it's a little bit lower down, and there's a gap, and so you have to make a fairly tricky jump to access it. Um, but in this one, nope, it's just a gimme. It's very easy to get. And so with that, uh, we've got everything we need. We got the honeycomb. The honeycombs are really important. Uh, because they actually permanently extend your health bar, in case I didn't mention that already. Uh, so you really want to know where all the honeycombs are in the playthrough, or in the castle. Um, so you can have the most health, you know, towards the end of the game. Alright, so with that out of the way, we're gonna come over to, uh, this room right here. And this is gonna be our second area on floor two. And, uh, what I'm gonna do is come down here. And this, uh, is actually an interesting change here as well. You'll notice that these gaps in the platform, they just move back and forth very slightly. And there are multiples of them. They're basically stuck in the exact same spot. In the NES version, it's one or two, and they go all the way across the screen and all the way back. And then all the way across the screen and all the way back. Uh, so that is actually quite a, quite a large difference here. And, uh, that can actually make getting back up here a little annoying, say, to get that music box. Here's our, I believe, fourth music box. So even more music now, as you can hear. I missed it. Uh, 
All right, so we probably only got like eight bucks or something like that. Not much. Okay, now back to the uh, the main stage itself. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is kill some enemies and try to get the key. There's another Hudson B, which I probably don't need because again, I have no idea if they even stack in this version. Uh, so I hope I'm not wasting all those bees. Um, let's actually go ahead and get hit by the glove as well. So just like in, uh, you know, in other stages, you know, pretty much every stage in this game is going to be trimmed down in some way or another compared to the NES version of the game. So, you know, I'm not going to show off every little uh, difference and whatnot. Um, but uh, it's it's really still interesting to see this game, you know, in this form, though. It's as a, as a longtime fan of the NES game, it's it's just quite interesting to me. So, so what we need to do is actually walk down to the bottom right hand portion of the screen. Uh, there's going to be a shop down there, and actually, you know what I'm going to do? So what I'm, what I really wanted to do is make the key appear first, and I don't think I've actually done that yet. You have to kill a certain certain amount of enemies to make the key appear. And uh, it hasn't appeared yet, because it usually appears down here. And it still hasn't happened yet. Really just trying to kill enemies to make the key appear, but uh, it's not really working right now, so... We'll go ahead and collect this free money. Um, now, high power, um, that gives you all of your health back. And so what this guy does is you can basically get a free health refill. But I always just take the money because it allows me to buy items uh, a little bit faster. And let's go ahead and grab that. And there should be a spring here. There we go. Go ahead and get another umbrella. And we're gonna drop down. Uh, actually, we don't want to go there yet. There we go. The key just appeared. You can you, you hear a chime when the key appears. All right, so we hit the uh, the glove, and there's our key. See, since I had to come down here anyway, I just figured you know might as well make the key appear. And uh, so let's go ahead and and come back up here. Whenever you go into a shop and you come back out, uh, my line uh, grows big again. So if you if you have to be small to access something, you need to come back and touch the glove like so. Interestingly, this is a, an interesting change right here. Is in the NES version, Mylon has to be small to cut through to the door from the right hand side. Uh, in this version of the game, he can be large. It doesn't matter. He can be big Mylon or small Mylon. Uh, he can access the door either way. So this section right here is also uh, structured a little bit differently too, but uh, you still get, just like in the NES one, you do get, uh, still get some money here and whatnot. So you want to come over here and just bust open a bunch of these blocks. Uh, also, our honeycomb is going to be here. Most levels in the game have a honeycomb, and that is how you can really extend your health. Just like an NES game, um, the honeycomb can only be accessed with small Mylon. And that's it! Uh, we did everything there is to do in that level. And now with that, what we're gonna do is come down to the well. And the well is actually fairly similar to how it is in the NES game, believe it or not. And, uh, so just like in that one, we have to hit this glove. Unfortunately, there's no bee here that I can see. I tried shooting all over the place earlier today, and, uh, I couldn't find the bee. Uh, in the NES one, there's a bee right by the glove, and, uh... It's a, sort of a convenience bee, actually. I didn't even know about it until uh, just recently. And uh, it really helped out towards the end of the game. You can come back and, and get yourself another um, bug. Or not bug, a bee. So these guys, if you kill them, they also make a balloon appear. Collecting the balloons, just like in the NES game, um, will uh, warp you out of this place. And just like in the NES game, there's also a honeycomb right here. Although, all these blocks have been condensed quite a bit. Uh, the patterns here are not nearly as expansive as they are in the NES game. Um, which, you know, I, like I said, uh, mo most of this game has been shrunken down quite a bit. Even if the areas are quite faithful, uh, the areas themselves have been shrunken down. So, like this right here, we have to bust open these blocks. There's also another bee down here. There he is. 
And what's nice about the bees is they go up the screen so slow. And you'll notice that this is different too. So in the NES one, there is no flame in the middle. Um, and it's also easier to not take damage uh, as long as you keep jumping and you have the vest. Uh, so these fi these flames will damage you in this version, just like in the NES game. But it's easier to avoid that damage as long as you jump at the right time. Or not. Uh, apparently I was taking damage that whole time because I just lost my shield. Uh, not a big deal. Alright, so like in the NES game, there's a honeycomb up here. We want to grab that first. And then shoot the floor and then fall down to, uh, to our boss fight. So, it's the same kind of boss, a uh, big, fuzzy, fiery-looking thing. Actually, he doesn't really look fiery in the NES one. He's actually, I think, a very dark color. Um, but on the Game Boy screen here, uh, they've got him drawn uh, in a bright manner. And what's interesting about this is after you grab your, your uh, hammer here, it actually spawns you back towards the beginning. The NES one spawns you uh, all the way down at the bottom here. So if we fall down to the bottom, we can still go down here. Um, but this version doesn't spawn you down here like it does in the NES game, which is very interesting. And uh, just like in the NES game though, I want to kill one of these guys to get a balloon, so I can just warp my way back out to the top. Got it. It's actually easier to access the balloons in this version, I find. Uh, these guys are really fast in the NES version. And this, the, you know, the uh, the well is one of the most dangerous places in Mylon's Secret Castle. And this is going to be our next... Uh, actually, no. No, we don't want to do that yet. We want to come down here and hold up here. There we go. I noticed that you have to be towards, like, the left-hand side of the block in order to to go through windows and, and uh, you know, brick walls and whatnot. It's a little awkward uh, compared to the NES game. The NES game, it doesn't matter. Mylon secret... Like, Mylon doesn't care. He just... You press up, and he just sort of gets sucked into the window, and he goes right through it. And in this game, it's a little more finicky. So you do have to watch out for that. Uh, so with that, we got ourselves a saw, which can cut through these darkened windows. And this will reveal our next boss fight here. And now this is a very interesting change. It's an it's it's a bird in the NES one, but it's it's really a bird in this one. He really looks like a bird. Um, so this is actually quite an interesting change in this version I found earlier tonight. Uh, I was just surprised by this. So all the other bosses so far, design-wise, had been uh, quite faithful, but this one. Uh, they changed his design completely. You notice, you notice that his attack is different too. It's uh, more of like a discus uh, type of projectile, and uh, instead of the uh, the same old you know pointy uh, fireball looking projectiles. So that's a really interesting change right there. All right, and this is also another interesting change in the NES version. This window takes you to an item, uh, also some free money. But it's a very, very difficult jump in the NES version. Uh, in this version, it's a super easy jump. Anybody can get to it. Uh, I kind of understand why it's a difficult jump in the NES one, because it's sort of like a hidden area. You get free money, you can get health, and... Um, and uh, But you do want to come here because you get a good item. You get these uh, spring shoes, uh, which allow you to jump high uh, normally, just anywhere, basically. And uh, so that'll help us out on uh, later parts of the game, as well as uh, with uh, boss fights and whatnot. All right, so we're about 30 minutes into the playthrough as well, and uh, you know we're we're making decent progress despite all the explanation and, and whatnot uh, that I've been doing. Uh, but we're basically on floor three now. Floor three is the the final uh, the final main floor in the game, I should say. Um, but with that, what we want to do, uh, what I am going to do is, uh, I'm going to come, uh, let's see, is it here? I don't think it's here. I think this is probably, yeah, I can't go in there. That's, uh, that actually takes you up to the next floor. And let's go ahead and try to get rid of that. I'm going to come into this window here, uh, because what I want to do is, uh, get Excalibur, which is, uh, it basically upgrades our bubble here. Uh, and it'll do much, much, uh, much, much more damage. And, uh, 
So let's go ahead and play the next music box game as well while we're at it. And you'll notice that uh, Mylon is able to jump a lot higher now too. Much, much higher. Almost too high. <laughs> too high for these music box games. Alright, so just 46, so we're not gonna get... Yeah, we're not gonna get 25 bucks, but that's okay. Alright, so normally when I play uh, Mylon Secret Castle, I don't usually come here uh, first, but I decided to start coming here first because, um, you know, you can get the sword, uh, Excalibur. Now, in the NES version, um, you know, you have to get a feather to ride this elevator that's going up and down the screen. Uh, but I found in this version, you don't need that. Um, and you can just jump straight to this door. I don't know if you can actually do that in the NES version. If I try to hit the elevator right now, I'll just fall through it because I don't have the feather. But if I jump just right and land on the door, Mylon will still go in it. Uh, so I can actually get this sword without having to even ride the elevator. Now, I don't know if riding the elevator is completely mandatory uh, in the NES one, but I, that's how I've always done it. I've always ridden the elevator. Uh, so what I also need to do is, in order to uh, get through this next area, I need to become uh, Small Mylon again. And I also need to get to the top of the screen. So let's go ahead and work our way back up here. And there we go, we're Small Mylon now. And then one other thing I'm going to do is just run to the right here and bust open these blocks, and I failed. And actually, I might be able to just squeeze my way through here, come to think of it, because I am small Mylon now. Yeah, so I can actually just work my way up this way. And the reason I want to do this is because there's a honeycomb here. Now, I don't actually really have to work my way all the way back up, but I'll do it just to show you. Let's just go ahead and just keep shooting stuff here. So for those of you guys that uh, were wondering, I'm actually playing this on my analog Super NT. Um, which is why the gameplay is actually uh, a little small. We're going through the Super Game Boy that's also plugged into the Super NT. Uh, normally when I do Game Boy stuff, I try to go through my Frame Meister to uh, use its zoom functionality, but uh, I didn't do that today uh, because the uh, Super NT is going directly into my capture card directly instead of going through my upscaler. Uh, the Super NT does 1080p out of the box, but again, it, Super Game Boy doesn't fill the whole screen, unfortunately, so... But the gameplay should still look sharp. I'll probably zoom it in a little bit in software, um, which will make it look a little bit softer, but that's okay. And uh, I didn't mean to actually go back into there, but uh, so let's go ahead and just exit. We're gonna fall all the way back down. Uh, but we got everything we needed to. We got the honeycomb. Uh, we got the Excalibur. But you'll notice that it's, uh, it made our bubbles, uh, start to flash. Uh, which, uh, yeah, it basically denotes them being a lot more powerful. Uh, so that'll also make future boss fights uh, a lot easier. But since we got the key, we can go ahead and exit, and we, we have no reason to go back to that room, uh, later on. So, let's go all the way down here. And, uh, we're going to... We're gonna have to actually jump up here, jump up here, 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 and then fall down. And uh, this is our next stage that we uh, next stage we need to be at. Uh, there's also a music box here, so we're gonna go ahead and play that game. And the key has appeared already. The key's probably gonna be on the right hand side of the map.
Uh, 46. And that's okay, not a big deal. I'm not really hard pressed for cash, although I do need cash uh, for the end of this level because we do have to buy ourselves another item. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is just, oh look, there's the key. Now this is kind of a, a trolley kind of part. There's a falling platform right there. Um, I found that it made getting that key very difficult uh, when I first played through this game. Uh, so that's something to, to be wary of. Alright, so I am going to just work my way back over this way. Because there's some money in here. And we can go ahead and jump through one of these platforms. Or one of these gaps. They're not really platforms. And, okay, come on. There we go. Just like that. Uh, there's also going to be a honeycomb up here. And a Hudson B. Although the game apparently doesn't want me to have it. Because the game is trolling me now. So I guess we're not going to get the B. That's okay. It's not a big deal. Uh, so what I'm going to do is work my way up uh, to the right-hand side here. And we're going to go ahead and just hit that one block. And I'm going to... Uh, no, I'm actually thinking in NES terms right now, uh, and this is not the NES version. Uh, and it's not letting me jump up. There we go. Okay, so interesting thing here. Uh, so in the NES version of the game, you have to shoot the ceiling. Uh, in this version, you don't have to do that. Um, you just make a door appear. Uh, so in the NES version, you have to actually go up above the ceiling. Uh, but in this version, you just make the door appear and you just jump right into it. It's actually kind of an interesting change. Um, because it's quite a tricky little gap to get through. Uh, on the NES version of the game, as you guys will see. So that's one of the, uh... One of the big differences I noted uh, earlier tonight when I first played this. Alright, so let's uh, go ahead and scroll the screen over to the left and actually get this money while we're at it. Might as well. And then that's pretty much it. We're done with that place. There's nothing else to do. We got the music box. Um, so with all that now, we can go ahead and... Um, we can actually go to the... Uh, upper tower here. So, and, oh, actually, you know, come to think of it, I don't think I actually wanted to be here. I think I actually wanted to go to the other room first that I was thinking of. But we're gonna just fall down, we're gonna go ahead and just play this out, we should be fine. And just like in the NES game, there is a honeycomb right here. And again, the honeycomb's very important. They refill your health and uh, extend your health bar. So, this level does have some differences. Uh, for one, in the NES version, it'll actually screen transition to a, a brand new screen. In this one, it just it just continues to scroll down, uh, which is kind of an interesting change. Uh, also, we need to fall down, like so. And let's see if there's a B here. Yep, there he is. And let's go ahead and fall down here. Just like so. And what I found is that this screen doesn't really want to scroll over to the left. Uh, so you need to scroll it to the right, like so, and then just exit. And exit to the boss fight. These bosses are so much easier in this game. Um, the bosses are by far the most stressful parts of the NES game because they shoot projectiles crazy fast. Um, and the projectiles will do a lot of damage too. 
So yeah, we wanted to come down here, I was right. We wanted to come down here to get this water, which will allow us to put out a flame, um, which is gonna be in this next room over here. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. And that's gonna take us to another boss, and then it's gonna take us to a tower as well. Um, or the inside of another tower, uh, where we'll fight a mini-boss. Let's go ahead and get hit by that, uh, glove here. So this area is is arranged quite a bit differently than the NES one uh, in certain ways, like where that money appears and whatnot. Uh, this gap right here is the same, um, but up top here and down below, um, things are arranged just a slight bit different with where uh, you know money is placed and things like that. Uh, interesting spot for the key to appear as well. So we're gonna go ahead and grab that. Grab this money. On this stage, money tends to reappear. Uh, so you can come back through this stage a few times and recollect uh, cash that you've already gotten. Let's go ahead and hit that, but we have to hit uh, the bottom there to open up that door. And then this gives us the, uh, the Zeppelin. And we can actually float down slowly now, uh, which is a nice feature. Alright, so let's go ahead and get hit by the, uh, the glove again. And what I can do is, you know, when you come out of a door, a shop door, uh, all the blocks respawn. So you can actually shoot the blocks again uh, to get more cash. More free cash. So let's go ahead and do that too, just to get some money. I don't, I'm trying to think if I actually need money from here on out, and I, I actually don't think I do. I think we've actually bought everything that we need to buy. Uh, so any money I get now, is just going to be used to uh, refill my health and whatnot. Which, refilling my health completely, it's going to be $15 a pop. But I haven't had a need to do that yet, so far. We might not even have a need... Uh, at all. Okay, so let's just come down this way, get some more money right here. And, uh, this flame is going to appear, and he's actually already out. In the NES version, uh, you have to scroll the screen over quite a bit for him to appear. He doesn't just appear out of nowhere like this. Uh, he- or, or he's not ready for you, like he is in this version of the game. So that's an interesting change as well. He's just out in this version. And so with that, we can go ahead and, uh, bust open these blocks, push that over. And then, uh, now we're gonna go ahead and fight another boss. So one strategy I do in the NES game is I just sit on the ground, kind of like so, and I just shoot and try to line up my shots when he lands on the ground. Kind of like so. And since there's less distance between you and the boss, and the, you know, the, there's less distance in the entire arena to begin with, um, it's easier to just sit in place and uh, attack the boss while standing on the ground, like I was doing there. Alright, so just like in the NES game, we need to hop our way over this way. And just like in the NES game, there are also lots of invisible platforms. Um, but this one right here, I can just go and, uh, touch the fake maiden. And she turns into this bird. And what I found earlier is I can basically just tank. The bird doesn't really do a lot of damage. And, uh, that gives us, uh, either a cane or... I, I think that was a cane. Uh, it's hard to tell in this version. Uh, but you have to get a cane and then a crown from the, uh, the two fake princesses. And, uh, so that was basically the right tower. And for some reason, it pops you back out all the way down here. So we have to work our way back up. Just like so. Alright, and we're back up here. Uh, and we can go into this tower right here. One interesting feature is that... When you're going into windows in this version of the game, or doors, uh, you won't get hit by lightning bolts, as long as you're, you're moving into the window. In the NES game, even when Mylon is walking into a window or a door, if a lightning bolt touches him, uh, even as he's walking in, he will still take damage. So that's actually a nice change, uh, from the NES game. 
Uh, that was kind of aggravating. I've actually gotten game overs um, by having lightning bolts kill me as I walk into a, a door or a window. Alright, so just like an NES one, th this place is very, very faithful to the NES one. So we're just gonna keep walking down this way. Uh, everything basically looks the same, but we're gonna fall down here, and then there are gonna be a couple of blocks up here. We need to jump through that area that we just opened up. And then that'll take us down here to another boss fight. I also find that the hitboxes seem to be a little bit smaller uh, in this game. You'll notice that I actually pretty much touched a couple of those projectiles. I just skimmed right by them. Um, but kind of like a modern shoot 'em up, uh, it didn't actually do anything to me. All right, so like the NES game, we're gonna actually walk our way over here. We don't want to hit those, uh, you know, those platforms uh, in between here. Otherwise, we'll end up falling down um, past the princess, I believe. I think that's what happens. Very trollish uh, level design. Um, but of the two towers, I think this one's the easier one uh, to to get to the princess. And just like before, I'm just gonna go ahead and tank. Because I've got lots of money, uh, I'm not really worried about taking too many hits right now. And there's the crown. Um, I'm not worried about taking too many hits because I can just go buy, uh, I just can just go buy some health. Uh, 15 bucks, I'll get all my health back. And, um, what I'm gonna do is, uh, actually work my way up, um, Work my way back up here, and I'm going to fight the next boss, which should be a pretty easy boss. Uh, and we have to actually go into here, the window I tried earlier, but it was locked apparently. And with the cane and the uh, crown, uh, it'll trigger this boss fight. And then once we defeat this guy, we can basically go to the end of the game. It's the uh, the final boss room. And look at how fast he dies, it's crazy. He's so much easier in this game. He's very stressful to fight in the NES version of the game. Uh, but with that out of the way, um, I'm gonna go ahead and... go back through this window. Because we can get some health here, and we'll get some free money, too. And high power, there we go. Now, unfortunately, I don't have any Hudson Bs, uh, so I have no shield. But that's okay, it's not a big deal. I think we'll be fine. So in the NES version there, those lightning bolts that passed by me as I was already in the window would have still hit me in the NES version of the game. So... And that one would have hit me too in the NES version, but it didn't hit me here. So it's definitely... Um, you know, while the game doesn't run as well or, or move as well as the NES version, they definitely polished up some things as well. Uh, made some tweaks to make the game uh, a little more... a little more user-friendly, if you will. Alright, so this is gonna take us to the fourth floor, and we just go through this uh, right-hand window here. And uh, this will take us to the final boss. So, there are, are multiple rooms here. I didn't count how many there are. Let's go ahead and count how many there are. So, in the NES version, there are four. And in this version, I'm guessing there were probably four as well. So this is number two. Number three. And in the NES version, they're, uh, they're colored differently. In this version, it looks like they're textured differently. So yeah, it looks like there, there are four rooms. Is it four? Let's see. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, there are. One of these square textures just has a tiny dot in the middle. Oh, yeah. That's like a sort of a... Looks like it's dice or die in the background. Okay. Yeah, all these textures are different. Huh, there are actually... are there more than four different textures? Hmm, interesting, okay. 
We'll just go ahead and just work our way back up. And we're gonna go ahead and try to kill this bird here. I'd really like to avoid taking hits if I can, because... Uh, one difference is... Uh, the final boss, if you kill one of the fake ones, because there are many fake ones, uh, you have to find the right one and kill him. In the NES version, if you kill a fake one, uh, he'll actually give you health back, but in this version, that doesn't happen. And no glove there. Glove is gonna be in a different room. But let's try to kill this guy, this bird. Okay, I don't think he's coming back up. Nope, there he is. This guy can be pretty annoying, to be honest with you. Uh, and this guy, Maharito, and that's the final boss. And he can only be hurt when he opens up his cape. And he has a tendency of only opening up his cape when he gets close to you. And let's hope this is the right one. It's probably not going to be. Yeah, not a great start. I've taken multiple hits. And again, without having the health refills, um, when you kill a fake one, uh, it's gonna make killing the other ones a little more difficult. At least taking a lot of hits. Maybe that's the right one. Nope, it's a fake one. Alright, so I have to actually go back around the other way. Alright, so... Hmm, how do I want to do this? Well, let's just go back. Let's go this way. I don't think he's going to open up. I'm not going to be close enough to him. Oh, he's not going to bounce back either. Wow, so I can't... Okay, there it is. I was going to say. There's a glove, good. All right, so now we can come and uh, try to attack this guy. And I keep taking damage. Taking our time. <laughs> and that's a fake one. We're going to end up uh, dying here. So what I think I want to try to do is... I don't know if I can do it. I should be able to do it. I should be able to run back down. And if I keep running left, I think we might be able to ex actually exit. Oops. 
<laughs> if you press X, you can actually switch back to the uh, default Super Game Boy color palette. I actually, I, I really like playing with uh, just black and white visuals when I when I play this game or any Game Boy game for that matter. Now I understand like it might look better with other shades uh, on the capture, but I actually prefer uh, just the straight black and white look. So we kept running over to the right in the beginning, that might have messed us up. But I was under the impression you could actually exit this area. And if we can, then we can go get our health back. And if we can't, uh, we are, uh, we're probably screwed. And uh, we'll end up getting a game over. Doesn't look like it's gonna let us quit. I'm um, pretty sure in the NES version you can actually exit. But uh, this version, it doesn't look like you can. And I'm shooting the floor in case, you know, there's, there's a gap we can fall through and then it takes us out of the castle but it doesn't look like that's happening. And uh, that's actually pretty interesting. You can hit select and it brings up an item menu. That's actually uh, a difference as well. Okay, unfortunately it looks like I might actually have to do this. Now if I could get myself a B, that would be great. Uh, there is a, a, a B or two in the, uh, the NES version. That's uh, one of the fake ones. Man, well, this is uh, a lot more of a pain than uh, I thought it would be. Okay, there he is. Good. We're just gonna wait over here. Just take our time. I don't think he's bouncing back. In the Game Boy, and the NES version, he'll go all the way over and then come back on his own. Uh, in this version, he doesn't seem to do that. You have to actually scroll the screen over to trigger him. That was close. Probably making for a really boring let's play. That's okay. You know, part of the purpose of this video was to do comparisons as well as I play through the game, uh, which is something I haven't really done before. I mean, I always like to talk about comparisons and, and whatnot if I've played various versions of, of one game. Um, it's just something I naturally do. But actually, 
you know, showing the comparison footage is something I haven't done before, so... And this is a little stressful, only having one block of health left. The other thing is, I don't know if his health is resetting every time I push him off the screen. But we're gonna just keep trying it as is and see what happens. So when I played it earlier, I actually beat him on my second try. It was the the second Maharito I picked uh, was the correct one, but not in this case. It's a fake one, too. All that work. Well, at least I know that my hits were doing something. That's good. So now we have to go through that all over again for the next one. Very tedious final boss if you don't get it just right in your first try. Or second try. Yeah, so you can only do damage to him when his arms are open, too, and that's well, one of the frustrating parts about it. Trying to focus here, because I'm on edge. <laughs> close. That was really close. That's the right one. <laughs> 
Oh, what a pain. What a pain. Well, there you go, guys. That is Mylon Secret Castle in the Game Boy. Now you guys get to see uh, one of the biggest one of the biggest differences in the game, and that is we actually get ending screens. Uh, so we do get the same text, which is kind of neat, but uh, we also get some some extra ending screens as well. And uh, there we go. We've got uh, a lot of the guys that uh, well. <laughs> some of the guys that helped us out, some of the uh, musicians from the, the Music Box game, and I think uh, the shopkeeper was there too, so uh, that's pretty cool. I like how they uh, went the extra mile, and uh, instead of just porting the NES game straight, they, they actually added some stuff to make the experience a little more uh, full, if you will. Uh, a lot of the people I've talked to, uh, one of their biggest complaints with Mylon Secret Castle is that you beat the game and it's just... It says this, you bravely saved Castle Garland, thank you Mylon, but there's no castle in the background, there's no nothing. Uh, it doesn't even do the credits, I believe. So, but yeah, it's very nice. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this playthrough, I hope you enjoyed the uh, the, the brief light uh, comparisons. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to do this kind of video uh, on a regular basis, because... I don't have a lot of games where I uh, I go through you know multiples of uh, the same game but different versions. So you know I don't know when this opportunity will arise again. But uh, since I I went through the NES and Game Boy Mylon Secret Castle back to back, I figured you know this will be a great opportunity since I've already got the NES footage on my hard drive. It would be a great opportunity to do a sort of a. Uh, comparison uh, based let's play so but yeah hope you guys enjoyed that uh, sorry for that that really long final boss section um, but I just uh, I kind of shot myself in the foot by uh, losing a lot of my health and uh, that was definitely problematic so yeah but it is what it is uh, I think we actually ended up spending less time on this playthrough still than I did on my NES playthrough um, surprisingly, um, but this game is easier. It's easier to go through. Like I said, it's a lot more welcoming uh, for new players. Uh, if you want, if 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 you like Mylon Secret Castle on the NES, but you have a lot of trouble with it, you might want to give this one a try. Uh, I'm not really sure what the uh, the actual cartridge goes for these days, but uh, if you have a flash card or if you do emulation or something like that, um, definitely fire it up there and give it a try. And uh, it's it's a good time. Like I said, it doesn't play as well as the NES one, but uh, there are some nice little tweaks here, like the uh, the occasional auto fire. Uh, Mylon picks up speed faster, so you don't have to build a lot of momentum to jump far. That's that's uh, that's always very nice. Um, and uh, the game's not as punishing. You know, the well area I think is a little bit easier. Uh, enemies overall are easier to deal with and uh, bosses are much easier to deal with. But um, the rest of the game progression is pretty much the same, you know. Um, uh, levels are in the same spot that they normally are, special items are in the same spot they normally are, um, and even keys have a tendency of spawning in roughly the same locations as they do in the NES one. So, yeah, it's cool. So I'm glad I've gone through this a couple times now. Um, I can say I have, and, uh, you guys can say that you've seen it before, so... But yeah, that's gonna do it for me, guys. Again, I hope you enjoyed this playthrough. Uh, if you're new to my channel, consider subscribing. I've got a couple hundred Let's Plays on here, and, uh, many, many more to come. If you're already subbed, thank you for your continued support. Feel free to give the video a thumbs up or a thumbs down, depending on how you felt. And until the next one, take it easy.